Let's see if this thing is actually up and running and working. I said that in an Alan Partridge voice. Good morning, Gary. Good afternoon or good evening. Whichever one for you it is right now. I'm just getting set up over here. Um, just trying to get things finished off. If there is anyone else watching, hello. I'm a, I'm a little bit early on this one. I'm just getting set up, ready to take you guys through iNav for the DJI FPV system. So good morning, Gary. That's not really Alan, Alan Partridge, that one, is it? No, it really isn't. Just the morning 001 now. Yes, for you it would be. Yeah, because we're on that late hour. Man, you are up late. You are up late. Um, good evening. Now, um, I'm going to kick off in a couple of minutes. And what I'm going to do tonight, guys, is I'm going to take you through iNav because a couple of days ago, uh, iNav has had its RC1 version 2.4, which adds support for the DJI Digital FPV system. Now, only today we actually had the configurator to go with that because it does take two parts of the system, one and the other. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually go through setting this one up live. I have actually done it once already, so I do sort of know what I'm doing. But um, yeah, what we're going to do is take you guys through it and hopefully get you up and running. Now, as I am on, I may as well switch over to the full camera view. Let's just hope that has actually done it. It has. So, uh, good evening, guys. If there's any questions you want to ask while I'm doing this, please do stick them in the chat. We are up and running and it is showing it. I'm just looking at it on my phone as well because I am still very, very new to this. So, I am. I don't find it quite as easy to get set up as the good Lord Gary, who is in the chat as well. Um, he's using a slightly different platform than I am. I'm using OBS. Um, Gary's been using StreamYard for a couple of reasons and it allows you to bring more than one person in which this doesn't actually allow me to do easily or at least I don't know how to do it. Okay so to take you through the basics of this now obviously when the DJI digital FPV system we have the goggles here we have an aircraft with a flight controller hanging out the back of it and the reason the flight controller is hanging out the back is my main flight controller isn't easily supported by iNav. So I've had a secondary wire, a second one hanging out of the back end that has got uh, iNav on board. So I can actually show this to you. Um, but when it first came out, the OSD was only supported by Betaflight. Now, there were some technical reasons for this. I don't know a huge amount about technically but the basics are there are multiple versions of MSP or multi wee serial protocol and believe it or not iNav uses a newer version than Betaflight and this added in some incompatibility when it came to the custom OSD. With the original OSD it wasn't actually an issue um, because it still worked but what you didn't have with that is the ability to change the PIDs because there was no two-way communication between the goggles and the flight controller it was just one way. How However, there has been quite a big effort from the iNav team to bring that full custom OSD on board for the DJI system. And that's what we have here now today. Now, it's come in iNav version 2.4 RC1. Um, let me just find the actual website. Here it is. It's coming 2.4 RC1 over the last couple of days. So it is still a release candidate. It is not full release at this time. However, it is now available to use and test. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you do need to get those images for those map images for the DJ's Rover. Yes, they are, Gary. They come with it. They're part of the uh, sensing system that comes with it. I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, but yes, they are. Um, so there wasn't full support, but the iNav devs have been beavering away in the background, and I do believe they've had some contact with DJI as well, and they have finally got proper integration for the DJI Digital FPV system, as it's now noted down here. Now, the reason I want to show you guys this is the way it works is actually slightly different to Betaflight in the sense of how you actually configure this. Because in Betaflight, you simply turn on MSP, and then once you turn on the custom OSD in the goggles it works it's actually a little bit different with iNav because as I mentioned at the start they are running this higher end uh, MSP protocol and what it means is they've actually had to switch back to an earlier protocol specifically for the DJI unit but they didn't want to roll all of the firmware back so what they've done and if I just switch this over to the screen hopefully we're 
we're up and running there now. Yeah, we are. What they've actually done in this version of iNav is introduced the support and they've actually put in the older version of the protocol as well, but only for the DJI system, which will allow it to actually work. So there is a slightly different way we need to activate it, but it is very simple. It is very straightforward and we're going to take a look at it now. So as I've said, equipment wise, what we have is the DJI FPV goggles, which is hooked up, ready to go onto my battery. I have got my uh, five or is this six inch? I think it's a six inch uh, um, Armaton uh, quad. And I've got a Brain FPV Radix inside. However, there are iNav targets for it, but I didn't want to end up messing my config up on that. So I've actually ended up jerry-rigging a Omnibus F4 Pro corner on the back of it. And that is simply attached to the ear unit for me to be able to demo you this in this video. So don't worry, it should be all up and running. So what the first thing we're gonna need to do is make sure that you have got the latest version of iNav and the latest version of the configurator. So you will need iNav, 2.4 RC1 and you will need the configurator which is RC 2.41 as well so it is both pieces that you need and you do need to make sure that you've updated both of them so download the newest configurator update your chosen flight controller to 2.4 RC1 and then you're ready to go so what we're going to do now is just get this all plugged in now I have done this once so I'm hoping we don't get too many issues doing this live uh, so let me just get the USB plugged in and I'm not going to plug in the power to the flight controller at this time because I'm going to do the configuration first so we're going to connect and now you can see that we've got our connection on the screen and we're all up and running. Now I haven't done a full config on this board. I've only done a very basic config, but the basics are all there ready to go. So on Betaflight and just as you did on that, you simply go to the ports tab. Now on Betaflight to set up the DJI FPV system, you would normally simply enable this MSP option here. However, you don't do that in iNav. You actually leave that alone. And on your chosen UART port, you actually go under the peripheral section over here and you actually go down in the box and look for DJI FPV VTX. And what this does, this sets the MSP protocol to that older version that they are using to be able to make it compatible with the DJI FPV system. So what we're going to do now is simply set that to DJI FPV VTX. You leave your MSP turned off. You click save and reboot and then that will configure the flight controller ready for the DJI FPV system. And it really is as easy as that for the telemetry point of view. Now to do the RC side, if you're using the digital RC with the DJI system as well, you're going to want to make sure that you've got the S bus fast option turned on as well. And this is under the configuration options. So again, depending on what UART port you have chosen to connect it to, you would simply need to make sure that that is configured as a serial RX. So for me on this one, it's actually serial six is the one I've set it to. So we're gonna save and reboot on that. Our RC2 has already landed already, is it? When I looked earlier, RC1 was the latest. They've already pushed an update. That tells you how quickly this is developing. So, okay, so we've done on that. We've got the Serial RT RX turned on and just again, make sure we've got our digital FPV VTX. Then we go under uh, receiver, uh, sorry, configuration. We're gonna go down to receiver mode. And at the moment it says no receiver. So we want to choose a serial based receiver. And you can now see that you've got all of the options like before, but you've also got S bus fast. So you can use it with the standard S bus option if you're not going to be using what was known as the DJI HDL originally, or you can set it to the S bus fast, which gives you that fast seven milliseconds RC control link when you are using it with the DJI one. Now I'm going to set this one to S bus fast, although I haven't actually got this. Have I got this hooked? Actually, I have. I just haven't tested it. Um, so you simply set it to that. Again, it's a save and reboot just to make sure that all the configuration is correct. And we'll just wait for that one to kick in. There we go. So if we just double check everything that we've got, we've got under our ports, we've got our serial RX, 
we've got our DJI FPV VTX under the peripherals. And then under the configuration, we can go around and see that serial mode and S bus fast, nice and easy and set. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is power up the DJI goggles. Now you'll hear the fan kick in on these because they are quite loud. So I am gonna actually switch back over to full screen for this bit. I'm gonna put some power on to the uh, flight controller, which I'm using here. Make sure I don't burn this one out. And then I'm gonna try and show you this in real time, which is not going to be easy, but we're gonna go and give it a shot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that it's turned on. And at the moment I have got the uh, custom OSD disabled. And what I'm gonna try and do now is see how badly this goes, but I don't know if I can show you this. This camera on this is not the best. Trying to see if I can. F I'm trying to look at the screen while I'm doing this, so please bear with me a second. This is a part of it that I didn't actually practice very well. No. You know what? I think. Give me a second. I'm going to manually focus this. What I'm actually going to do is switch over so I can actually see this on the uh, computer screen as well. All right, let's, let's do the focus before we do anything, shall we? Ooh. Oh, we're getting closer. <laughs> Sorry, I went into, um, I turned off Ibis, not focus. Let's see if this will actually play ball or not. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do that. Okay. <laughs> Thought I'd give it a try, but that's not really worked out, has it? Anyway, what I can show you is that I've got the basic DJI OSD on the display there at the moment. If these had HDMI output right now, it would be really handy, DJI, if you are listening. But basically, I've got the basic OSD on board. Um, what we're going to do now is turn on the auto OSD, which we will go on to here. And we're going to go on to the custom. Now, I'm actually still on the firmware that resets automatically every time you turn it off unfortunately, but it's handy for actually doing the demo of this video. So now I've turned on the custom OSD and not that you can see, but you can see the ladders. Oh, actually, let me get rid of the menu. What I might actually do to be able to show you this, I might get my GoPro. There you go. You can see the ladders on the side there. Not easy to see, but you can see that the ladders are turned on and the custom OSD is in place. Now, you have the same set of configuration options on this as you had with the original Betaflight OSD as well. So if you go into the OSD settings, it works exactly the same as the Betaflight OSD. You've got the ability to grab all of your settings over here. So remaining flight time. So for instance, craft name, I can turn that on. It'll appear in the top corner up by here, and you can drag that around down to here. You've got heading graph, we can turn that on, we can move that around as well. So you've got this ability to do the same options within iNav as you had within Betaflight. And that really is the basics of it. It really isn't difficult. It isn't um, that hard to actually do. And once it's set up, it simply works like that. Now, I'm just trying to think if there's a better way I can show you this. Um, do, 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 do. One second. This is what happens when you don't prepare when you're doing a live stream. And if you've got any questions, guys, while I am doing this, please ask me. Um, and I will get them in a second. I'm just trying to see what hole my GoPro has buried itself into as it was here on this bench not 24 hours ago. Aha. Now, the question is, do I have a HDMI that goes... F oh, you know what? Do I have a micro HDMI? to full size. Yes, I actually do. Okay. 
Let's see if I can show this a little bit better. We're flying by the seat of our pants here. All right. One second, you're going to lose me. Now, I'm not sure what audio you're going to be getting now because I've just realised I've actually unplugged my um, camera which has the audio on board, so please bear with me. If you can hear me, let me know. Top of the Pops effect, Ian. Yeah, it is. It is that top of the pop section. Right, let's see if I can actually show you this properly now. Again. Oh, look at that. Right, I know why that actually isn't working because the stupid GoPro, you actually have to change the resolution of the zoom in, which you can't do while it's on HDMI. Well, didn't it? Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to trust me on that one. Anyway, it's working. It's definitely, definitely working. That's what I'm going to tell you. It is definitely, definitely working. Um, so the setup on that is very, very easy. Okay, it really is. He's in the matrix. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the matrix. Um, it really is that simple. So to make sure you've got it working, I'll bring it up on the screen so you guys can see it. So for your ports, you simply set your peripherals to DJI FPV VTX, set your serial RX on for your valid uh, serial port, and then you simply then go into the goggles, turn on custom OSD, and it should all work as simple as that, but do make sure that you are on the correct version of the, I, uh, sorry, the iNav configurator. Um, now, as I said, it does work very, very similar. And actually the receiver, I haven't actually set the receiver up on this yet because I haven't got a battery in this because this is still broke after I butchered it last time. And I'm going to ask you guys a bit of a thought on something. Um, no, direction, Rob, direction arrow alt speed will be with the next update. DJI have already announced that is coming in the next update. They haven't said when, but the fact they've already said it's coming should mean I reckon it's probably going to be less than a month but you have to remember they are in the middle of Chinese New Year over there at the moment which does put them on a three week shutdown this is pretty much week one over week two uh, next this this week coming and then week three the week after I would expect the update for this to be in the next three to four weeks which will add that home port arrow and everything as well although the FPV system seems to be being done by a slightly different Part, uh, department in a different area not actually in China so it could actually happen sooner so again I've uh, now I haven't actually set the radio up so I'm actually messing with this one myself I actually just check I've actually got it wired uh, yeah I have it's on serial 6 yeah that's not working is it no I probably haven't set that up is it serial 6 I'm on Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's on serial six. Okay, let's have a look at some questions. Uh... Hello, Davey. How are you doing? Nice to see you on a Sunday. Is Bruce lurking? I don't know. He usually is here giving me abuse. He likes to give me abuse. I think it's one of Bruce's... Um pastimes actually is giving me a boost uh he's in the matrix yeah i'm certainly uh definitely am in the matrix what mic am i using to walk away like that i gary i'm using my road video mic go so the way i've got this all set up if anyone is interested is i'm using the elgato hd60 uh, streaming box which is connected to my Panasonic GH5 and on that I am using the Rode Video Mic Go and it's all hooked over HDMI and in so what happens then is via OBS Studio obviously you can set the adjustment down uh, at the bottom in OBS just to set your volume levels but because the audio is coming over the HDMI of the camera and I'm on my wireless um, mic I can walk around the room and it's just it's just this one here 
it's as simple as that. Um, I keep meaning to get the lav for it because it does have a lav input, but it's like 80 quid. Sorry, it's going to make a bit of noise while I do this. Shove it back on. Um, it's about 80 quid, and I just haven't felt the need to, to do it yet. And the nice thing about it is it works very well at about half a foot distance about there. It's good if you pop it on the desk as well. It's fully adjustable and I've got it tuned with the GH5. The built-in amplifier on it is a little bit overbearing in my opinion. So what I've actually done is wound the built-in amp right back and I've set it via the GH5 audio level and it tends to sound very, very nice. I do keep meaning to order the lav because it does. The only problem with this is it is quite a bulky thing on your jacket and it's okay when you're wearing a fleece like this, but when you're not wearing a fleece and you're trying to scrumple it on your shirt, it's a bit awkward. And I know Bruce Mr. X-Jet and RC Model Reviews uses exactly the same microphone. The Rode Wireless Go, it's called, 160 quid. One of the best bits of money I've spent on this channel. It really, really is. Okay, so let me just get through some of the uh, chats. Uh, Bruce is lurking. How many have we got? I haven't even looked at how many have we got on board tonight. We've got 12, 12 of you. Welcome, guys, on a Sunday night. Now... I haven't, I haven't really put that much together for tonight's video, really. There's a few things I'm going to rant a little bit about. One of them was this, went a bit quicker than I thought, and it would have been nice to be able to show you on the goggles. I wonder if I can get it. Ooh, that's interesting. It says my Fumi versions don't match. Hmm, interesting. Ah-ha! I haven't updated the firmware on my remote controller. That's why it's whinging at me. I missed that. Um, okay, so let's see if I can show you this. The problem with the lens on this GH5 is... No, it's not going to work, is it? No, no, no. When I film this, I've, I should pro I'd probably do a filmed version of this as well. Um, when I do this filmed, I end up using the GoPro because it's about the only thing that will actually fit down into the lens of the goggles and allow me to show people what's going on inside. These things, they don't make them very easy to actually get into. I've been thinking of 3D printing up a bracket actually for it to be able to put a bracket in and show you guys um, very easily rather than me having to hold it on top every single time. Now, Gary, as you were asking, if you are, st are you still there, Gar? I'll talk to you a little bit about these if you want, if you are still there. Um, yes, these come with the uh, Rubbermaster S1 and it's part of the games that are included with it when you're playing it. And it allows you to actually play um, like a multi-fire game where you can shoot the targets, one, two, three, four, five. And the faster you do it, and you can do it against other users as well. But it also allows um, the app's recognition when you're doing the block programming as well. And you can set it to use the markers at certain positions. And you could, depending on how much you want it to do, so you can say, if you see that, recognize that, it will do this or go and do that. Or if you see that marker, you're at this position and then, and then go and do that. It isn't an area I've explained a huge amount. Oh, sorry. It isn't an area I've ex pardon me, explored a huge amount on yet within it, but it is quite cool when you do it. And it actually does that augmented reality thing because when it sees the marker on the app's display, it actually puts it over the screen and recognizes it as well. And when you shoot it, it shows like, uh, is it using blocky or something? Yeah, it's very similar to sketch. Uh, blocky sketch all of those block style programming but it's also python based as well now there are a few quirks with it in getting it to move it, it's got chassis control and then it's got movement and your instant reaction um, is to go right move forward but it doesn't move you've got to tell the chassis to enable first before it lets you do it and I can actually show you this because you can actually do it on your PC let's do this you know what let's do this live streams are for random stuff so let's go live with okay sorry let me come back on the camera let me just find the app because believe it or not you can actually connect it to your PC as well now you've got to have the remote controller to do it which is this one here you do actually have to have it but it has two USB ports on the back 
and it allows you to plug it into the computer. Now, I think I've got the app installed. Let me just have a look. Robomaster, Robomaster. I swear I had the app installed. No, okay, let's go get it. I thought I had the app installed for this. I am... Ah, actually, that's a point. I don't think it installs. I think it just downloads. Clearly not. Weird. Okay. Let's go get it. Now, you can connect it to the PC, as I've said. Okay, we're going to go on the downloads. Hello. Why, why does everyone have names I can't pronounce on their YouTube channels? <laughs> right, Spurtini FPV. Hello. Um, explain very slowly because this is me. How do those wheels work? You know what? Yeah, they are mind-boggling is how they work. Right, Mac version, PC version. It is an EXE, and that is why I don't think it actually installs. Right, let's get this up and run in a minute. Okay. Now I'm going to take it off the table. Here it is. Let's uh, pop him on the floor because I have driven it off the table once. Um, the wheels. Let's have a... All right, Gary. Let's, I don't know if you've seen these up close or not. Right. I'm going, to, I'm going to manual focus on this so I can show you these wheels. Oh. Right. Okay. So, if I show you how these wheels look, what you've got is individual rollers all in a single direction on the wheel that rotate individually. So when you move your hand that way, you can see it begins to rotate like that. And that is how it basically is able to move sideways. It's, it is mind boggling. You have hijacked my stream, but hey ho, let's go with it. Um, hey. Uh, let's okay. So we've downloaded the RoboMaster. Oh God! Right. Yes, yes, yes. Run anyway, and I'll put it up so we can see it now. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it does install. Interesting. I swear I'd done this. I swear I had done this. Unless I ah no 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 no. I did it on my MacBook. Okay. So what we're going to want is a USB connection as well. Um, you can actually put a mouse into this as well. Believe it or not. Okay, so we're going to go from here. So I want my phone. And we want to connect to the little beggar. We're going to want a lightning cable as well because I am an Apple man with regards to phones, although I'm now a PC man where it comes to computers. I don't know if any of you guys in the live stream use Macs. I've suddenly started moving very much away from them, especially the more things I've been seeing of recent times, which I'm not particularly pleased about, if I'm honest. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is open the app on my phone. And then launch this. Ooh. Allow access. Two seconds. Oh, God, I've got to log in. One second. Oh, I don't know. Is that 
I don't know what verification code. You know when they do these horrible verification codes that you can't see? Right. Now the question is, can you actually make it smaller? Yes and no. When I say I let the children play with it, yes. You read into that as you wish. They do play with it with supervision. Now, let's, let's see if this will can you see that oh, i can't see what you're saying now which is really frustrating um can you see that right so if i go onto this and i switch back could you actually see that yes you could cool okay i'm going to switch back because i don't see comments when i'm doing it um okay so as you can see we're on solo and battle right so let's plug this in Haven't actually done this for a while. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna stick it in. What's it asking me to do? Phone mode? Yes, 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 we've done that. Oh, I know where I'm going wrong. I know where I'm going wrong. Now, I did this last time with the Wi-Fi on my MacBook and corrected, cor corrected, connected straight to it. However, that is not the case today. Ah, okay. So what I now need to do, okay, we're doing this live. Right, we need to move that over to access point mode. Okay. After scanning the... Uh Sorry, I'm just trying to figure this out live on air as we go along. So I'm just going to put my um, passcode in. Okay. So I've got to press the connect button, which is there. Ooh. Okay. Now, what is tr what is trying to do now is to connect to the wireless access point in my workshop. Ooh. So has that actually worked? I honestly don't know. Let's give this one more try. Scan the QR code from the app. Scan the QR code. Connecting. Try that again. Ah, I've actually come up with a problem. I, I've just realised. I've just realised that method won't work. <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay, sorry, just trying to think. I don't have 5 gig Wi-Fi up yet, I only have 2.4. Okay, let me just think. Okay, I'm going to have to show you this on here, aren't I? That's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, let's do it this way then. Okay, so the home screen of RoboMaster. Oh, look how good that looks. That looks all right, doesn't it? Okay, so the home screen of RoboMaster looks like this. We've got the option of solo, battle, or lab. So if I go into solo, I need to uh, switch it back over to standard phone mode because I switched it over to access point. Connect, connect via Wi-Fi. Let me just connect it back on properly because I switched it. there that one there and as you can see we're now all up and running again so obviously with the roadmaster what you've got is what, what you can what you can see is you've got the movement sideways you've got the you can see my log being over uh, And then on this side of the screen is where you can flip it around. So you've got the adjustment to rotate. And then you've got it there, which I got pointed at that idiot right there. And then that button there. No, it isn't. Where's the blaster gone? Oh, I've turned the blaster off. That's no fun. Gel beads on. Oh, I'm out of gel beads. It knows I'm out of gel beads. That's why it wouldn't fire at me. That's boring. Um, so that's the main options on there. Smoking yourself out tonight. I am actually slightly, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a shame I couldn't get this to connect. Why, why would that not connect? So if I show you the programming. Uh, exit. Lab. We'll just wait for that to kick over. I wish, you know, I used to be a Mac man, and this would have been so easy because I just screen shared this straight to my Mac and then showed you guys on screen. Moving back to PC is no fun whatsoever. Okay, so you've got Road to Mastery, DIY Programming. So we're going to go DIY Programming, start a new program. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Go into that there. And then you've just got the block programming, just like you have on the normal. So... You've got the name, so you've then got the options to choose. System, chassis. Is there a SIM for it? Um, it will play on the device, and I think you can run it through, but I haven't seen a full separate SIM, but that's not to say it's not in the PC app. I, I had a quick play with that, but I didn't do a big play with it. Um, I didn't dig into it too deeply. I just haven't had a chance on that side. I've started looking at the Python side of it, but I haven't actually done a lot with the block programming because I was doing that a lot with Tello and things like that. But um, um, now if I show you the augmented reality, if I hold that up there. Let me turn my laser blaster on. Sorry, amuse yourselves a moment. Another feature on this is quite cool, actually. I don't know if you know this, but you can actually tell it to record audio. So you can actually tap something and say, hello there, get out of the way or I'm going to shoot you. And it actually comes out. And so you can actually play it out of the RoboMaster as well, which is quite cool. Um, I really haven't thought about this very well have I so I've not really demoed it uh, too well now I'm in the middle of doing my review video for this um, I'm trying to get it finished let me just turn him off but I'm just not happy with how it's coming out if I'm honest it's nothing to do with the review it's just it, there is so much on the RoboMaster to show that there really is so much to it it's crazy it really really is and trying to put that together 
and show you that in a video is very, very difficult. It's very hard to put it and show every little aspect of it. And unfortunately for me, I, I've done bits of it and I'm just not happy with it. Uh, does a turret fit better cameras? Right, it has a DJI camera on board. Now I've not tried connecting a different camera to it. It is using a custom connector and I'm trying to remember, I had a feeling it was like USB-C, but I could be wrong. Let me just have a look. Or was it micro USB? It's very similar to USB-C, but I've not plugged another camera into it to see if it works. Um, the camera, you, there is lots of mounting options on it. You can mount a GoPro on it, but whether it would actually fit in with the DJI transmission system, I don't know. A couple of times DJI have done the uh, cameras on their systems with a similar connector to USB-C, but it hasn't been, and it works a little bit differently, unfortunately. Um, but you've got the camera at the top, just by there. And then you've got the speaker located just underneath the turret there. And then it, it, does, it does have a limit. It won't spin forever. It's hit the limit there. But it does, it's, it's very similar to the gimbals on the Inspire aircraft, if you've ever had one. It really, really is. Um, Again, I'm just starting to get to grips with it myself. I really am. It's a very interesting bit of kit. Um, range isn't great. It's Wi-Fi. It, it, so direct phone connection, you're talking 20, 30 meters with a wireless access point. You might get a bit more. Again, it depends the antennas and the devices you're using. On something like an iPad, you're going to get it further. But you can, you can either set it to connect to an access point or have it connect to... Um, your phone directly. Waypoints, not in the software as standard, but you can program all of that via the block programming. You've, it'll even follow people and lines. It'll actually track lines on the ground via the uh, software and it will actually track people as well. So it will actually follow you via the built-in software. Uh, hello to everyone else who's joined. Uh, let's just catch up on this one. Ooh, ooh, I've... I've lost the uh, window I was looking for. That was that one there. Um, let me close them. I want one. Yeah, so do I. Beyond visual line of sight. Yeah, you know, something which is interesting, which I haven't mentioned, is whilst that's the range of Wi-Fi, it does have standard RC inputs, and you could put a receiver and transmitter on it as well, but obviously you wouldn't then have video. However... That means you could put a here link on it because you could use the here link S bus output to go to the RC inputs via the main board at the back because it does have standard PWM inputs. Um, is it S bus or was it individual channels? I'm actually trying to remember. It's S bus. So it's got standard S bus input. So you could actually attach a here link to it. Put a here link on, put a GoPro on the top of it, and then you're talking, well, in the ear, which. It doesn't fly, but 20 kilometers from the ground, at least one kilometer range. So there is opportunities and you could actually program all of the controls of it via the S bus as well to give you the option to fire the blaster and everything. So there are some interesting things that you can do with that side of it as well. Now, there is the board that DJI give you is very locked down. It's, it's using their own proprietary software but it doesn't support the SDK properly at the moment. However, they do also sell third, not third party, but boards that are designed for larger robots as part of the RoboMaster competition. And you can replace the main controller board with one of them that gives you a lot more functionality as well. And these are on the DJI website. So if I switch over to uh, that a minute, and if we go to www.dji, um, actually, let me, that's the wrong window. Sorry about that. Use this one. I've already got windows open. www.tji.com. And if we go under RoboMaster series, actually, you go into DJI Store. RoboMaster. I'm trying to remember how you actually find these. 
and I'm not sure if it's they're only available in the USA. Uh, let's just go to the United States. Yes, here we go. Now in the States, they have these, Master Development Board A and B. And these are really designed for their larger robots. But that master board can be put into the S1 and replaced with metal or plastic gears on Watka. Now, the wheels are directly run from the uh, brushless motors. There's no gears on the wheels at all, um, but they are plastic. That stands the same for the uh, turret as well. It is all directly brushless motor every part of it is a brushless motor no gears nothing to strip at all and that's why it moves so um smoothly because there's just no gears in place if you see me rotating the wheel it just moves and it's actually got suspension i don't know if i've showed this but the front actually has the chassis actually has independent suspension on the front and it twists as well and then you've got the sensors all the way round and then you've got the battery bay in the back is, it is a DJI proprietary battery, so you're not going to get away with that one. And it has these clever sensors which pick up the lasers as well as the physical hits from the balls when you're firing it from the cannon as well. So it's a really interesting bit of kit. It really, really is. Um, I've been trying to get this review finished. And every time I've done it, I don't feel it's justified it. It's one of the most interesting and my favourite products anyone has made for a long time. I have the Cosmo, I had the Tello, which are all programmable, and I was playing with them as well, and I really liked it. I was a bit disappointed my battery died in my Cosmo, and I actually replaced it. It's a shocking job. If you ever go on YouTube and watch the video for that, it is unbelievable. But when this came out, it was on the list of I've just got to order one and, and it is for myself and the kids and we're still playing with it. We're still learning. Um, my only criticism with this is the wheels pick up so much crap. It is ridiculous. It works best on carpet, very, very thin pile carpet. It goes like a rocket on hard flooring, but it doesn't really want to stop. But the wheels do gunk up very, very easily. Um, and that is something that I have noticed with it. And the trick is actually put it on some carpet to clean the wheels. Uh, I've got a very thin pile of carpet in here and it's perfect for it. And it actually um, just cleans the wheels out nicely. But it is something to be aware of. It is something to be aware of. And that's about the only criticism on it. Now, I, I want to do some 3D printed parts for it. I need some protectors on the wheels because I have scuffed them up already. Because it does go like hell and it will slide into things. And I'm going to 3D print some stick-on protectors to go on the side. Unfortunately, my software, because uh, I moved from Mac to PC, my design software I didn't actually have. And I'm useless at learning new things, basically like that. So I've had to try and find a copy of 123 Design for PC that's very very old and I've now managed to find it so I can go back to using 123 design I cannot use AutoCAD I cannot use FreeCAD I cannot use um, the other one that they've replaced it with now I'm just I, I certain aspects I can learn certain things very very easily and other things like software I have to use what I'm used to using because it will literally cause me to throw the computer out the window Fusion 360 I just can't use them I, I 123 design I can do almost anything on other than that, I just struggle. I really do. I'm trying to think of, yeah, it must have been Fusion 360 I tried and it just did my head in. Absolutely did my head in. To do the simplest thing, I was sitting here for like half an hour going, I just want to make a bloody circle. And I want it to come out and I want it to do that and I want it to do that and I just couldn't do it. So I've managed to find an old copy of 123 Design. I've got it back on my PC again. Um... So um, I'm able to use that as well. Now, these development boards, they're not too expensive. Now. They're 80 quid. It's not $80. It's not terrible, um, to be fair. And they also have all of the other bits. Now, there is a GitHub server with all of the uh, info on for this as well. I haven't delved into it too much. A lot of it is in Chinese because obviously Robomaster is over mostly in China. But there's some really cool stuff with this. There really, really is. Okay, so two 
get back. I, I, I didn't really plan a lot for today anyway, so Gary's managed to give me something to talk about. Um, but there are a couple of things I want to touch on. So, OK, I have, if you joined us halfway through, I did a shod, shod, shoddy attempt. Uh, I'm just telling me the 19-year-old, 16-month, he's way ahead of me already. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I just struggle with it. Um, so for the guys who's joined halfway through, I did a terrible um, way of showing you iNav working on the DJI FPV system. But it does work. If you want to check that out, please do. I should have prepped a bit better on that one before actually going live and coming up with the abomination that I did. But I do take you through what settings you need to do it. Obviously, Robomaster, I will get the review finished. I got some cool stuff I've done. Not that cool, but I, I got a, a video of the build, me putting it together, and a few other things, and I need to get it finished. I need to voice over a lot of it because a lot of it is actually uh, audio voiceover, and I need to get it up. I just need to get it sorted. Um, just some other stuff. Uh, let's come back on to me. Just some other stuff I was going to talk about this week, really, that I've come across. Bruce has given me a little bit of an idea, which I'm going to steal from him, and I'm going to try and start it next week or the week after, actually, um, and I'm going to let him give me some abuse. And as he's not here, he's not here to tell me off, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Autel, I've seen a few more reviews and footage from the Evo 2 this week, and I'm beginning to see some really sketchy output from this aircraft but also one or two that look very very good if you've been looking at any of the reviews on the evo 2 some of them the, the footage just looks terrible now remember they're all showing you the standard model at the moment because there are no one inch models in anyone's hands i'm not even sure they technically exist at this time now autel have said they'll be delivering this at the end of the month we're not far off. It is the 26th today, so they've only got a couple of days left before people's orders should start shipping. We'll see what happens with that. But if you are looking at it, I've seen a mix of some really great footage from the Evo 2 standard and some really poor footage. And the reason you're seeing that is this uh, quad bayer filter, because it is going to give some really contrasting results depending on the conditions it's flown in and that's why you're going to see some outputs look really really good and some not so good now original bodo uh, is a channel I, I follow on twitter and youtube and he's he's a good guy and interesting he actually in his review talks quite a bit about trying to edit the 8k footage in itself and that is going to be a much larger problem for people than many realize and it isn't as straightforward as people think i haven't even looked at trying to do that myself even on this new build but there is some um do you know what gary that was the next thing i was going to touch on as well there is some interesting footage out there but it isn't as um it's as sketchy as I was expecting it to be. And as the next thing I wrote on my list is Skydio. And I really don't know how many of these units are shipping right now. Because there was an initial influx of footage from many users. And it's all gone a little bit quiet. I've been following the groups. I don't know if they've done the initial shipment and then everything's on stop until... Um, shipment 2 is ready because they are backed up now until about Q3 2020 so it's going to take a lot of time for people to get their products in their hands so I don't know what's happening with this whether it is drip feeding or whether it is an all-out release I might send um, Adam a message actually and just try and find out what they're doing are they drip feeding these models out to people or are they actually now on stop until the next batch and the next batch? On the flip side of it, I haven't seen much bad. There was that initial crash, which you saw with it flying over the bridge and it crashed into the pylon. It's, it, the, the, the guy is actually, I've been talking to him on Twitter. He comes across as a really good guy. I think he was pushing the aircraft to its limits. However, um, he's about the biggest crash that I've seen. And it was totally destroyed, frankly. Um, but... It's about the only bad one, but it is all quiet on that front. And it will be interesting to see what is going on with the Skydio. Okay, weather across um, the place isn't great. Obviously, they're not available in Europe yet either. So you're not going to see models over here. But again, not seeing the videos coming out of the US. So we'll probably, I might send Adam an email on that one and see what he says. Could be interesting to talk about on Tuesday, Gar. Um, really... Uh, the only other thing in the drone industry, and, and a quick touch on news this week, is the rumours on the M300 and Inspire 2. I expressed my thoughts on that on um, Gary on the podcast with Gary on Tuesday on Drone and Sundry on SUAS News. I personally don't 
think there's an Inspire 2 coming anytime soon, but I could be completely wrong on this one. I think we're into interesting territory where you've got drone manufacturers trying to up each other. And the reality is DJI don't have to up anyone. They do what they do and people will buy it or they won't. Um, but you've got Autel obviously trying to catch on the coattails of the Mavic 2. You've got the Skydio, which is doing something different. And then you've got Unique and Parrot, who are really quiet. The H3 hasn't really been delivered uh, yet, still, even though they announced it quite some um, images. If that's the fake ones, Gary, I did see the fake ones, yes. If it's that, that fake video, yeah, I, I thought that was a legit... Um, it's well leaked. I haven't seen any others. Have I actually missed some genuine ones? No, I haven't. <laughs> um, it's interesting times. 2020 is going to be a very interesting year in hardware. Um, and you're going to have a huge amount of choice this year. Probably more choice than you've ever had. However, what I will say is this. Choose your purchase wisely don't rush into it right now because of all of the changes with the legislation, all of the changes with everything around the corner. We do not know where the land lies on any of the products right now. And it's it's inconceivable to me that anything that's released this year won't be able to be updated to accept remote ID. However, I do wonder if the manufacturers could also get stuffed here as well by the government. So whilst I, I would 100% expect DJI Hotel Unique all to do everything within their power to make a 2020 model compatible, that isn't to say that the government is going to make that easy. And there's a lot more to this than meets the eye in the background. Um, that was really about it on the uh, drone stuff for this week. If there's any questions, I don't know if there's anyone else other than just me and Gary. Uh, let's have a look here. Where is it? How many of us? Where are we here? Oh, there's, there's 13 guys hanging in there. I do appreciate it, guys. If you do have any questions, um, toss them in and I will answer them. Yeah, there is a lot of talk about adding devices at the moment. Um, it... <laughs> The problem with this is it's just the device is the easiest part of this within remote ID. You know, whether it be network ID, whether it be uh, broadcast ID, technically this is very simple stuff. It really, really is. It's the legislation aspect of this that makes it very, very difficult. And it is how the government are going to be forcing every manufacturer to have their equipment certified before they let it go. And to be able to retrofit a device for remote ID, it's going to have to be certified by the FAA. And it is going to have to have all of the compliances that come with that, which includes preventing flight automatic landing and preventing takeoff if it's not working properly and that is the problem with the DIY aspect because it's not going to have that integration into the flight controller now I still believe that there is a way that radio manufacturers might be able to comply with this because at the end of the day your aircraft's not going to take off if your radio doesn't send the takeoff command it's going to tell it to return to home if the software tells the radio to tell the aircraft to do that. So there is some possibility that radio systems will be able to be made to comply with the remote ID element, but that isn't any radio that you own today, and that isn't to say that your radios will be able to be used with multiple aircraft because it has to have a certain kind of serial number, and that serial number can't necessarily be used on multiple aircraft. So there are some issues around that side of it as well. But... For me, I do think there's the possibility the radio manufacturers might be able to do something. But you're talking three, four, five years down the line. You know, you're not talking next two years. And anything you own today is a no, is a categorically no. It really isn't. Um, okay, I think that is it for this one. We are coming up to the hour. It soon goes. Um it was a bit of a mess, that one. <laughs> that's that's probably the easiest way of doing it. I'm going to put a proper video up in the week on doing the INAV. I'll, I'll get that done tomorrow and I'll put it up. I was hoping to actually use the live stream. And something I hadn't actually thought about was 
the fact you wouldn't be able to see in the goggles. Um, so that was a bit of a, 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 a faux pas on my part. Obviously, the RoboMaster, I was hoping to be able to connect that up, and I hadn't actually tried that. Gary, you caught me out on that one. So um, that's something I'll... You know what? That's going to be my target for next week. My target for next week's live stream is to have... Robo we're going to live stream RoboMaster live next Tuesday. That's what we're going to... No, we're not. Not Tuesday. Uh, Sunday. Get my days right. I'll see you Tuesday, yeah? But we're going to live stream RoboMaster live next week. I'll set myself the challenge of making that happen this week and just to try do something a little bit interesting. Um, I want to thank everyone who's watched this mess of the one that has been this week. If you've got any questions before I sign this one off, please do put them in the comments now. I'll answer anything I've got. There is some interesting stuff that I have been playing with in the background here. I've got the 20km uh, link from Sky Drones, which I've actually got up and working now, and I need to do another test on that, just like I did with the healing test. i got a jerry-rig that horrible unit up and the irony of this is I did this this time of year last year as well so I'm going to be in the middle of winter on the top of a mountain trying to demo if this unit can do 20 kilometers range so I'm going to try and get that done in the next month um, I've got a gimbal I've been doing a review on from Zenu Zenu um, the Weeble Lab which I'm playing with at the moment and comparing that to the Ronin S and the Ronin SC and that is about all I've got going on at the moment, actually. And then I'm going to do a little bit more on the computer, probably into February and March. So, uh, yeah, plenty to come yet. But, yeah, pretty much that's it. Right. Thank you very much for everyone who's watched. Uh, my apologies for the mess of this one. We'll try and make it a little bit more organised next week. If you liked what you've seen, please do subscribe to the channel. There's a button somewhere in YouTube. You know all the score. Please hit the likes and everything. That lot is what really helps me along. And if you'd like to support the channel, please do check them out. Good effort. <laughs> yeah, it was a good effort. It just didn't cut. Good effort, poor execution. That's what we'll go with. That's it, guys. Take it easy. There's a button here. Unlike your button, Gary, it is one button for me. So I'm going to go three, two, one. Take it easy. Have a good week, guys.